documentary with some information about my family history. I'd like to introduce my mom. Uh, she is not married, and since I live with my grandparents, she's just down the street from us. Um, since I live with my grandparents, uh, here they are. That picture was taken in front of the War Memorial in Ottawa. The generation that my grandparents are in, they got to see TV come into Canadian households, the development of the space program, uh, the in inventions uh, like the silly putty that was actually used for war originally, but then became a household item, um, laying the ground for the civil rights movement in the 60s. They got to see a lot of the creations of Canada um, for what we have now. Um, families intended to have three or four children. This was part of the baby boom. Um, they were pushed to get a good education and to move to get a job opportunity, to travel to get their job. Now looking into the third generation, I'm going to look into my great-grandparents. Uh, this last summer of 2009, my family and I traveled to Ottawa, Canada. The reason we were going is because there was an unveiling of a wall for the Hong Kong veterans. Uh, the Hong Kong was during Second World War. Uh, the Japanese captured a lot of people and kept them prisoners. My two great-grandparents were caught as prisoners and kept for four year, almost four years till they were returned home. The reason I found it important to go was, my great grandmother first of all had passed away the year before so I was going for her because I knew she would have wanted me to. But also because I wanted to see some of the documents that are were available to see about what was it was like during that time to see what was happening. And to hear the story from other families perspectives. It took a, it was a three day weekend for the memorial uh, in Ottawa. And we had a couple veterans uh, with us, so that was interesting, and I was able to have dinner with a couple of the veterans, and they talked about their story for a little bit, but it was hard for them to think back. But it was just important for me to go and support um, that, because I have heard the story my entire life about my two great-grandparents and a couple other relatives that were part of the war, so that's why I chose this one to be my main memory of my ancestry, uh, my looking back to my uh, family.
look into my grandparents' grandparents now. This slide shows my grandmother's grandparents. They were all born in the late 1800s. Three out of the four of them were born in either the I Iceland or UK, and the one that was born here in Canada was born in Nesa, Manitoba, which is an Icelandic community north of Winnipeg. Three out of the four of my grandmother's grandparents died here in Canada. William Beatty, my grandmother's grandfather, died in Carlisle, Cumberland. My grandmother knew uh, all of them except William Beatty because he died about 11 years before my grandmother was born, but she knew the other three very well. These are my grandfather's grandparents' side of the family. Um, my grandfather's mother's parents came from, came from Ruthenia after World War I. Ruthenia, as you may know, is no longer a country and it's hard to find information about it. But um, my grandfather's mother was adopted um, in Winnipeg, Manitoba, and in, Winnipe in Manitoba, they completely seal the records, and my family and relatives have tried for years to um, get access to them, but there's been no luck. So that ends our ability to know the past on my grandfather's mother's side. But we do know some information about my grandfather's father's side. Uh, we know that they came from the Channel Islands. Um, we know they were both born in the late 1800s and they both died in Canada in uh, Winnipeg and they are still in Winnipeg. Um, every Saturday, my great-grandfather would take my grandmother to downtown Winnipeg because my great-grandfather worked Monday to Friday and my great-grandmother, Amma, which I call her, um, would be with my grandmother most of the week. He would take um, my grandmother downtown kind of for them time and either do shopping or pay the bills or stuff, but to be together and have time because he would rarely see her because he was he worked so much during the weekdays. The following three slides show the involvement of my two great-grandfathers in the world, Second World War. This is the Winnipeg Tribune newspaper. Um, during the Second World War, they carried a lot of information about who was being captured as prisoners or who had been able to come home. Um, they included as, as much information as they could get their hands on during that time. This is the main newspaper in Winnipeg. Uh, even after 30 years um, since the World War II ended and the prisoners of Hong Kong were returned home, the newspapers were still talking about who had been captured. Um, this is my great-grandfather on my grandmother's side with a little clip out of the Winnipeg Tribune newspaper after 30 years. This is my great-grandfather on my grandfather's side. This picture came out of the Winnipeg Tribune newspaper. This is one of the many uh, ship documents that are historical, and there are four babies on this one. They're all near the Red Arrow. This page 
shows a map um, of two ships that my ancestors used to come over to Canada. Um, one from Liverpool uh, and one from the Channel Islands. This ship is the SS Laurentic, which sailed across the Atlantic Ocean to Portland, Maine. This ship is the SS Laurentic. It is the sister ship to the Titanic. Um, some of my ancestors actually were supposed to come over on the Titanic. Their luggage was even on it, but for some reason they missed the ship. Thank goodness. The SS Laurentic is on the left, and the Titanic is on the right. The name of this ship is the SS Canada. Some of my ancestors used it to get from Portland, Maine, United States to Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. After going through all this uh, information about my family history, I wanted to put it together and look at it as a map. So these next slides are showing you as I go further and further back into the history of my family and also looking at the children they have. The pink dots are female and the blue dots are male. We are looking right now back five generations starting from my mother. Now we're looking back from my grandfather. This is my grandmother's side of the family, looking back another five generations. This is looking back on, at my great-grandfather on my grandmother's side. This is looking back at my great-grandmother on my grandmother's side. I called her Alma. This is my great-grandmother's father. Now we're looking at my great-grandmother's mother. Currently, we're looking at my great-grandmother's grandfather. He was married three times and had a lot of children. And now we're looking at my great-grandmother's grandmother. The music I used for this presentation was Intermental Music by Hal Leonard. The song titles are Can't Help Falling in Love, Gus the Theater Cat, Everything's Alright, Love Changes Everything, It's Now or Never, and As If We Never Said Goodbye. This information I collected was through Ancestry.com and talking to my family and relatives and putting information all together as one document. I, you should look into your family history and see the amazing things that they were involved in.